this episode is like the epitome, in my opinion, of what the podcast can be or like what the best part of this podcast is. It's just me and my cousin talking shit and being ourselves and talking about something we just watched or whatever. You know, we didn't do a bunch of research on the movie, but we got into a lot of discussions and honestly had a, a really fun time. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it, which is kind of weird because the movie is really heavy and weird. And, and But, you know, I think that's why we had to make it fun. We push the envelope. Is that a saying anymore? I don't know. We, we say a lot of like risque. I don't know if people even say risque anymore. Jokes. And um, it was fun. It was fun to just not give a fuck like old times with, with my cousin and just bullshit. So um, definitely uh, check out The Tribe. It's on Amazon Prime if you guys are interested in watching it. Um, yeah. Other than that, check out the Mind Control Podcast Instagram. It's Mind Control Podcast on, on Instagram. And um, that is like the number one place where we always try to promote things and where you can talk to us directly, recommend things or whatever. So. Uh, yeah, enjoy the podcast. Give the video a thumbs up if you are watching on YouTube. If you were listening to this, check out the YouTube. Uh, just search Mind Control Podcast and it should be up there or in the uh, description of the podcast episode. Uh, yeah, enjoy, guys. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Mikey, and I'm Corey. Every week we discuss and review a new book, movie, album, TV show, or honestly any piece of art or culture that ourselves and you guys choose. This is Mind Control. Mind Control. So there was these people who were being kidnapped and, and, and mind controlled. And... Exactly dude, and I can totally see how that happened, because like, imagine if you were just given acid or just drugs like that that are so disorienting for hours and hours on end and never being able to come down and not feeling safe and having somebody tell you things and accuse you of things, you know? Yeah. Mind control. That's how we do it, baby. GG. Mind control. On today's episode of Mind Control, we are going to be discussing the 2014 Ukrainian film, The Tribe. Written and directed by Miroslav Slaboshvitsky, the tribe takes place at a Ukrainian boarding school for the deaf, and although Miroslav is not deaf himself, he wanted to make a contemporary silent film. The tribe centers around a deaf teenager, Sergei, who attends the boarding school for the deaf and quickly becomes involved with the gang operating from within the school. As Sergei struggles to fit in with the tribe, he is led down a violent and destructive path that alters the lives of all involved. What makes this film stand out is its use of sign language as well as body language to tell the whole story with no dialogue. There are no subtitles throughout the entire film which makes the film one of a kind and displays that even without common language, a powerful story can still be told. The film stars Rihoy Fasenko, Yana Novikova, Rosa Babi, and Alexander Sadovich. To this date, this film remains truly original and nothing else exists quite like it. This is Miroslav Slaboshvitsky's the tribe. Maybe not. All right, let's get into this. So, uh, let me start. Metrics, this. Let, me I, st let me start this shit off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let, let me hear what you got to say. I'm excited. <laughs> so, so for those just watching this video, we watched a movie called The Tribe. The Tribe is a movie. What was it like uh, 2017? 2014. Or, 14. Okay, so it's pretty old. Yeah, seven yeah. years old. And the whole idea and concept, I know you know, but just to kind of we'll go over it real quick. The whole idea and concept is a, uh, it follows a group of students basically at a Ukrainian boarding school for the deaf. And there's no, there's no spoken dialogue throughout the entire movie. There's no subtitles. And it's completely in, deaf, in, in, in sign language. Do you remember when Gabe on The Office uh, brought a, a Halloween movie in to, the, to, the, to show everyone? And, and nah. And and he go and somebody says like somebody said uh, it's like there, there's no they're not even speaking or they're not even talking and he's like yeah I know it's almost as if the the director knew that even just dialogue uh, was uh, comforting in and of itself and then he goes and then maybe think about that like it's so fucking true bro this is the most uncomfortable I've ever been watching a fucking movie ever I ha I had to try three times to watch this fucking movie it well, for whatever reason crawled into my soul. And just started just tearing me apart. And it was weird. It was like so fucking weird. Like we watch Gaspar Noe films 
we've watched weird shit, but for whatever fucking reason, this one just felt made me feel so uncomfortable. It was like I don't I can't even it's like watching uh porno with your parents. Like that's how I felt watching this <laughs> fucking movie, bro. I, I Did think you watch it, it with Monica or by yourself? I watched parts of it with Monica. Okay. Um but I will say before I, I know I sound like I'm shitting on it. I want to shit on it and I'm going to shit on it for this video. But yeah. <laughs> but I actually it's like I hated it, but I didn't not enjoy it. Like I hated yeah. it, but I enjoyed hating it. I'll say that. So it was interesting, visually amazing. But it, it fucking fucks with me. So, yeah, you tell me what you thought. Yeah. No. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I've been wanting to watch it for a while. And, okay, so I will say this. Like, I did I did like it, like you said. I enjoyed it. And I definitely didn't have the same response uh, <laughs> you did with the deafness and everything. Just because uh, I, I feel like, too, like, I guess I'm more used to it. Because, like, like, I've worked with several yeah. different kids that use sign language and shit, you know. Uh, Cause they can't speak. And uh, so I didn't have that response, but I will say, okay, so there's a lot of hype over this movie and, and it was good. Like, I think, yeah. I think like you said, visually and the way they actually tell the story without subtitles or anything. And you're able to know what's going on. Like, I mean, there were parts where I was like, Oh, where's it going? But after you watch it long enough, you're like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, the story and what's going on, Yeah, which I think is really cool that they were able to do that and kind of, it kind of I thought it was really cool because it kind of shows you how how much we communicate with our bodies without. I mean, mm. I, obviously, they do it on purpose because they, they can't hear. But how much we even you and me who, who can hear, yeah. we understand so much from people just by watching them move their body and language. their body movements. And then also I was telling Frankie, too. Also, I don't know if it's just that, uh, like because I definitely believe that that's part of it, but also. I think part of it is we're used to narr like when you watch a movie, you're used to these narratives. So you mm. kind of pick up on the fact that they're pimping these girls out before it's before you see it happening. True. You kind of pick up on these things because you've seen them in other movies or you're, you're or or I don't know. Like it's it's a I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I get that. Like, like you, you, you have an idea. You have an themes. idea of what's yeah. about to happen because of the dialogue from the previous scenes or whatever. And, and the fact that you're having to, the entire movie, movie you have to like figure it out it makes it super uncomfortable. Like you're everything is just being presented right like yeah. visually rather than audibly, I guess, or or vocally. So yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's why I thought so that's what I do like about it. I think it's really cool that they're able to do that. But I will say it's a uh, it, it can some of the scenes can run a little long where I feel like okay, mm -hmm. I understand what's going on. Now we could go to the next scene where as they kind of ran on and because of the silence, I could definitely see if I maybe saw this in a movie theater, it would have been way more uncomfortable with just the complete quiet. So I feel like here sometimes like I'll end up talking or something or yeah. saying some shit breaking the silence. But um but yeah, I, I did I did enjoy the movie and I thought it was really cool. And there were like certain things in the movie that I thought were cool and interesting, like how when they were in class, like instead of a bell, like things I never light, thought of. Like yeah. they had the light flashing. I, and I was like, that. oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like it, it is it was kind of cool getting into that. Um Dude, but I, I, I would Oh go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. What were you gonna say? I was just wondering about all the different things that deaf people have to use, like rather that we use, like they must have different types of alarm clocks. Like, yeah, you know, there's yeah, like yeah. so many different vibrations. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's, it was actually super interesting. Like, I feel like I might've learned a little bit about deaf uh, culture. culture, I guess through this, because it was yeah. just like, wow, there is this, it's almost like they don't even give a fuck that they're deaf. They're just living. This is just their life. Like, and it was kind oh, of bro. like awesome to see like, Oh, they just, they don't give a fuck. And deaf people it, it, in my experience, are hardcore man they're like they, i have like yeah i've just always every every deaf person i've ever known has always been kind of like a, a g like a badass is that weird to say yeah um <laughs> no no actually uh you bring up something that i actually wanted to i was gonna bring it up later but we might as well get into it now um mm. the teacher i used to work with and uh had said this long time ago years ago she had told me um that deaf culture is like really really because she knows uh, a lot of sign the deaf culture is really exclusive and very, they're very not accepting. Uh, mm -hmm. They're very hardcore, like you said. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard this and I never really, 
that much about it. But then the teacher I work with now, I was telling him about this movie that we watched and the tribe. And then he's like, oh, you know, he's like, that's interesting. He's like, because like deaf people, he's like, they have a really hardcore culture. Like, and I guess it's like a thing. Like, so I heard from both of them that I, I haven't looked too much into it, but um, that like it is like, so it's very exclusive. So like deaf people, if you're born deaf, a lot of times those people, they look down on the people who were born with hearing and then lose their, their hearing later because it's yeah. like, okay, you had it at one time. Like we were born like there. It's almost like, like an elitist muggle? thing. Like they're muggles. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like he's exactly. Like you're a muggle. You're a mud blood. You're half, yeah. you know, like, yeah, you're a half Z. Yeah, no. And they're very, um, that's wow. where the, but they both said that they could be very mean to yeah. like to other people in their culture too, especially dude. And uh, I remember multiple yeah. times being like, fucking afraid of a deaf person like multiple times uh, i want to <laughs> hear i want to hear the story about this girl who babysat okay, so so, <laughs> so i will tell the story of sister colleen and I, <laughs> that's her name okay. <laughs> but like i i do want to preface the reason that i even i guess i even got to those thoughts like why because in in this movie it made me wonder like why the fuck am i so uncomfortable watching these you know, just deaf people do sign language and why, why, you know, like, what would that mean if one of my daughters were deaf? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what would the, how would that change everything about me? And like, in a sense, like it reminded me of, ah, God, this is, I guess it's real deep, but I feel like growing up, there was a very, very popular culture of homophobia, right? It was very popular. Mm -hmm. Very, no, a lot of people were homophobic, I guess. Not necessarily like to their core, legitimate homophobic, but just homophobic jokes. It was just a normal thing growing up. So yeah. I, it just, you know, as an adult, and then you get to a point where it's like, and like, you know, I don't even know if I should say this on the podcast. There's just certain things in my life are being very connected to homosexuality, I guess I could say. I don't want to really call any, or say anything that I shouldn't say, but it's just like, I don't know. It just made me think a lot about like, damn, who I am kind of like, why I guess I felt, I feel uncomfortable with certain people with certain disabilities or certain, you know, con things about them or whatever. And it was just like, I wondered really deep about this. And if there was any sort of prejudice, I actually legitimately felt to deaf people. And in thinking about it, it's like, no, that's not what it is. It's very uncomfortable because it's just uncomfortable. You know, the I, idea of watching a movie with no dialogue in and of itself is uncomfortable. Trying to follow yeah. along with these, this sign language is uncomfortable, you know? So it was like, I'm really trying to, you know, I'm in a place where I'm just like second guessing myself about every single thing that I do. You know, I want to be, I want to be a good person. I don't want to be homophobic or prejudiced or anything. So it's just yeah. like, mm -hmm. uh, I, in that, in thinking about, you know, whatever, what made me feel uncomfortable and all this deep fucking shit I've been thinking for the last few weeks, uh, I thought in, in thinking about this specifically about deaf people or whatever, I, I realized, you know, I'm, I don't have any problems. Uh, you know, I think that's pretty obvious. But I do, like I said, have a lot of experiences with deaf people that are pretty negative. Like even in school, that was kind of the first things that I thought about. Like I remember there was a, a deaf kid who like, was and he might have been more than just deaf but i remember he was like very aggressive and like kind of just not friendly at all and i felt like this weird intimidation from him and in another story about sister colleen at bethel temple church in barstow california uh she used to bas <laughs> basically be the person who would watch me while my dad went and did all his pastorly stuff so there was multiple times like during church, like if my mom wasn't there or whatever, I would have to sit with sister Colleen and she was deaf and uh, she would legitimately like pinch my neck and like, and like, like, and shit like that. And like yell at me in like a deaf voice, you know how deaf people sound when they yell because she knew I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't understand her sign language or whatever. So she would yell at me with a deaf voice. And yeah. I, and I think that maybe that, had a little bit to do with, you know, why I feel like a, bit, a little extra uncomfort. Um, but yeah, so that's all it really was. She was just really mean. And then just hearing uh, as a child, a deaf person yell at you and you don't really even understand what deaf is. It's just kind of like scarring, <laughs> I guess, maybe. And so, yeah, that was yeah. maybe all it is. So I, I prefaced that baby for too long, but yeah. So <laughs> No, no, I've, dude, I, was I don't want to come off wrong. Right. No. Oh, okay. So <laughs> Another thing I was going to bring up, you know, um, I was thinking that too, going into this, I was like, oh, you know, like, uh, I don't, when we do this podcast, I was like, I don't want to come off as offensive to the deaf community. But then I thought, 
great good thing that they who's can't going, hear who's this. going i was gonna say who's gonna hear it <laughs> who's going to who's gonna hear it <laughs> i'll say the same thing <laughs> oh I, shit. I swear dude and when i was driving home i was like you know what i was like i should open up with that i was like you know i don't want to be offensive but they're not gonna hear it anyways you know? well you know, if you all, know youtube youtube is gonna snitch on us though bro they got the auto-generated the, closed captions titles? yeah oh shit we we're just kidding i don't want that Oh, they do that. Um, I didn't know that was auto generated. I thought you had to put that on. You could, yeah. you know, they auto generate it, and it, but it's not really that good. In, in podcasts, when it's just like di- dialogue, it's actually pretty fucking good. But oh, okay. with, if there's music no. or, or other things, it, it kind of fucks it up. But yeah, that's funny though because that's that's exactly <laughs> like what I was thinking. But no, dude, the um, the the movie in general though was it, it is cool. It, but I do understand what you're saying because like it is. It's 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 uh. Yeah, you know, especially the the vocalizations. I I, I get it, you know. It's especially like, if you grew up with it being like, you know, a negative presence, you know, in your which life. Which is weird I, to I say. I, I wouldn't say negative presence. I just had like, I don't know, certain experiences like, with deaf people that were not yeah. too charming. Well, you're audible, bro. Yeah, like I said, you're <laughs> audible. I, mean? so I know. You're against the deaf, bro. <laughs> it's funny. I kept telling myself, I'm like, no, you're, you don't have any problems with deaf people. You're just audible. It's just, you know, the opposite of who you are, dude. You know, audible, you know. I think there was some prejudice when you came up with that name <laughs> that's why you, that's why you, you know, came I up came, with it you know i came up with audible because of the football definition did you know that i no, yeah yeah i remember uh you uh, talked about it and then you text me one day that you're like oh it also means this and then it was like oh shit that's even yeah, better even better yeah yeah even fucking better Fuck yeah. and then 484 i try to tell myself it's like audible is like able to be heard and 484 like symbolizes like starting at one place in life taking a step forward and then taking a step back you know four eight four so it's like being audible about taking steps back, forward, and back. You know, being vocal. About oh, it. I never, hey, I never heard, I never, uh, I never knew <laughs> that. You getting deep right now. <laughs> um, um, but, but so, by the way, I would like to say that, you know, as a man, and this is never something I'd say in front of my wife. As a man, you <sighs> sometimes you have some regrets, especially when you're married. No, no, I wouldn't say regrets, but you know, there's just these things, you know, as a young man, you'd hope to accomplish, like, you know. You know, betting all styles of women. You know what I'm saying? One of the biggest thoughts in my mind that I've always had was, man, I never betted a a young, supple African American woman. You know, I, I've always wanted to, you know that. Never, never did it. But after watching this movie, I think that you know, I, I I'm really upset. I never fucked a deaf chick. <laughs> Hey, honestly, bro, she was Woo! getting it. I was bro, like, they was getting it. I, I was like, because they don't have, like, you know how they say, like, your sense of when you have, when you lose one sense, all your other senses get like, is yeah, so what? oh heightened, yeah, yeah. So, I bet, yeah, no, dude, if, if, I was, if I was fucking a deaf bitch too, I'd be getting nasty, like, you stupid <laughs> bitch, you stupid hoe. No, nah, I'm just gonna <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but you're all like you, you signing you dirty bitch, <laughs> dude. I like when she do that. I was like, dude, I hated the sloppy. I think that means understand? I Is think it, that means like do you understand uh, or something like that. Okay, yeah. there were I like certain there were like certain motions that I could tell that like I could like understand what they were saying. <laughs> like but I was like, oh wow, I kind of learned a couple things. Go baby. Yeah, go. so that's what I felt too because I do know uh, a little bit about sign. Like like yeah. I know like some of the alphabet and some colors and shit. Like just simple things, but. I was also thinking though, um, fucking you, the Ukra- it's in the Ukraine though, so it yeah. is different because True. sign language is American sign language, you know. So mm-hmm. Ukrainian sign language is different, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty crazy. American sign language is actually pretty racist too. A lot of the symbols that they actually still um, that they still use to this day, like to talk about different cultures, they're very like they're very racist. They're based in stereotypes, you know. Uh, uh, Did you just yeah, sign to yeah. me right now? No. I oh, didn't. oh, okay. <laughs> like holy shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, that means fuck. I'm on to hey, fuck you up, <laughs> bro. We've been signing, bro. We used to sign all day at EDC. Hell yeah, we used to that's sign. We were, that's basically what we we're doing. Yeah, we used to autograph females, bro. Just to fucking, you know. Oh yeah, yeah we used to fucking sign all day. <laughs> did, I did, wish I knew sign language. I'm gonna give a light show in sign language. <laughs> like, oh, that was dope. <laughs> hey, I spelled out something for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Nah, but um, <laughs> I did that. I, I did that a couple times to someone, and they fucking got pissed. Like some random, like giving a light show, and then you blow in their face. You ever did that? Oh, 
No, dude, I'd be pissed too, bro. I, 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 every time I've been to a festival or rave, it, most of the time, and no offense, because I'm pretty sure it's me too, but most of the time I talk to any of us when we're in a crowd, all of our breasts smell like shit. So Ooh, I'd be pissed if somebody, I'm sure. during the festival, you know, when we're all on drugs, like halfway through the night, I always think it, but I'm like, man, my breath smell like shit. I, too, I think so it's more because I, I was probably spitting. I think I yeah. spit on or them. You're just, yeah, and they probably too. also, I feel like that also seems very suggestive, like you're drugging them. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dragon a breath. like a like a mid you know yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holy so, shit um, did, did you do any research on the on on this like the director or how or any sort of like back into the movie uh no you know uh i did not and i was uh i was going to but i don't know why i didn't uh i i, I probably should have it fucking sucked because <laughs> the movie yeah sucks. but uh, <laughs> No, it w- it wasn't. Yeah, I guess it was because it was like I felt like the movie's pretty straightforward. I um I actually did want to look in though to I-, I would be interested to know. Excuse me, how many actual like gangs and shit like if there are death gangs, you know? Because this was like basically a gang. Okay, so you know? this is interesting. What can let me tell you briefly what I think the movie is, and then I'm sure you have a better idea of what it is. I feel okay. like it, what it is is just. <sighs> Okay, this kid goes to a, a boarding school because he gets in trouble. He gets into the wrong crowd. They get him into a bunch of shady shit. Um, he tries to take over the gang because some guy gets ran over. Or he tries to start taking, you know, some sort of control of it. He gets screwed over. He, he fucks his girl, falls in love with her, gets her pregnant. And then she gets a, a, an abortion. And I think that that he gets mad about that. And also probably because she seems like she wants she's going to leave or something. And then... He ends up getting going crazy and killing people or something. That's her, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think he's in trouble though in the beginning. I think oh, okay. he goes to the boarding school just because it's like probably. I bet you in the Ukraine, I, there's probably not too many schools for just, just the deaf. You know, isn't a boarding school like for kids who are in trouble though, like a continuation school? No, no. no? Uh, a lot of people, like a lot of rich people, go to boarding schools. Oh, okay. You know, because oh, like okay. they're fucking yeah. Like I mean, this obviously was not that. You know, I think it's for the deaf, but. but a lot, of, a lot of rich people go to boarding schools, you know, because you stay there and shit yeah. like that, you know, and they have the uniforms and all that. Um, and they're supposed to be good schools sometimes. This one did not look like <laughs> a great school, especially because, like, that one Dean dude was, like, pimping out the girls, too. Uh, oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah, he was okay. part of it. So he was the Dean. Yeah, okay. so that, that was the thing. Yeah, there was, like, it was, like, in the school, too. So, like, and then they were going to take these girls to Italy. So, they obviously had, like, uh, oh, inner yeah, it, working, yeah. you know. They were going to start pimping them out somewhere else, too. So, that's what it was like. Yeah, that's what I got. And then he joins his gang. They like him. And then he falls for this girl, yeah. even though she's a, a, a hooker. And then he fucking, uh, it seems like, I could, okay, so that's the thing I can tell. There are parts where I was like, okay, does she like him too, or does she not like him? You know what she, I mean? I think it showed like that the, she I think it showed that she liked him because when they fucked and she didn't want to kiss him at first, and then after she kissed him, I think that kind yeah. of showed that she liked him, right? And yeah, and and, and I guess he he uh he, he gave it to her in the on the floor. That, right that there, was my favorite. I'm not gonna lie, dude. For whatever reason, that might be my favorite scene of the whole movie, that sex scene. The fir- that first that one first or the one. one where they're 69 and no, that was cool. Dude, that <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, nah, dude. With a few minutes, I watched of Gaspar Noé's love. It, it remind is like the sex scenes are like that. Just like one still shot, and just like slow zoom in or out, and just like just in, going at it in, in like in like in this weird way that like weird like I don't know. It's like a, a honestly artistic se- sex scene. Like I think I looked at that sex scene artistically. I didn't even realize. Yeah, that it was. Now. Yeah, it was. It like, was. Yeah, like I. Yeah, the way was, that he I tried to kiss her, that. she said no, and then they, he kind of won her over in three different positions, and then she kissed him. It was kind of beautiful. <laughs> he, won <her> over. <laughs> he won her over in three different positions. Right. He did. <laughs> he, did. he switched he really, it up. He really gave it to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was artful because it was it like was. I was. Yeah, it was like it was like uh, I was never fully erect, but it was, <laughs> it was uh, there was some stirrings, you know. <laughs> Yeah, fuck yeah. 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 That would be weird, bro. If you were full hard, that'd be fucking weird. <laughs> would it? <laughs> would it be? <laughs> oh, shit. No, but uh, yeah, dude. I, You know, I honestly, 
for a while, this is funny to say for a while, dude, uh, cause earlier you brought up about how like you wish you would have fucked a deaf bitch. Like uh, <laughs> I remember uh, when I, <laughs> sorry, a deaf woman, when I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when um hearing impaired asshole <laughs> yeah sorry I'm sorry <laughs> hearing impaired um <laughs> what's it called that uh, yeah, did you I assume her gender i'll just get it going <laughs> sorry did you watch uh <laughs> did you watch did you ever watch weeds you watch weeds Fuck right yeah i love to eat yeah oh remember remember the 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 son's girlfriend's death oh yeah I remember, I remember I she was, was like, oh, you know, yeah, I remember I yeah. liked her. And I remember I was thinking, like, I wouldn't mind uh, <laughs> um, dating a deaf bitch. I was like, it would be kind of like, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, a hearing impaired. <laughs> no, we just keep, no, you keep saying bitch. So, the way you said deaf bitch is the best. Oh, my God. I love it. You know, oh. like, yeah, uh, I feel you, though. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. I wouldn't mind dating it's, it's, a deaf it's, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, it, it would seem cool too. And I, I bet you the arguments are easy. You could block, you know, you, you could block it out. You know, <laughs> like oh just, my god, you're just, all just just close your eyes, throw on some headphones. You know, <laughs> oh my god, I get sucks because you know the silent tre- treatment ain't gonna work on her, right? <laughs> <laughs> you always giving it a silent treatment. <laughs> Holy <Sorry>. fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! I love it. Deaf people, uh, um, we love you. Listen, we love you. Okay, if you guys have made it this far, you guys are one. You guys have been reading a lot, so good, good shit on you. And uh, two, we, we just we you. love you. We love you guys. Okay. Yeah. No, we do. No. We do. Yeah. Yeah. I bet everybody you, gets it though. Say. Everybody gets the fucking jokes. Okay. If we were watching a movie about uh, mentally retarded people, would they get the jokes too? Gay people, yeah. Mexicans, when, uh, whites, half whites. Uh, I was gonna say too uh, how you said. Um, you know, like when you lose a sense, like your other ones get stronger. Mm-hmm. Hey, imagine Helen Keller. Helen Keller was getting it. She was deaf and blind. Oh my god! And, and mute. She was probably getting it. She was mute. getting it. Mute means you can't talk. But I think, but a lot of times, deaf people are mute because yeah. they can't. You know, yeah. But some deaf really people speak. can talk pretty she, okay. She, yeah, yeah, they can. But mm-hmm. she was. I think she lost her. I actually, you know, it's funny. I was actually did was researching this this morning because I woke up and I was telling Frankie, how the fuck Helen Keller read a book when she was deaf and blind. I was just, you know, gonna ask you I was that. like, yeah, you know, okay. So apparently she learned. Um, so she went deaf and blind when she was uh, a year and seven months. So 19, like at 19 months or something. And then um, I guess she went to a school for uh, the blind and the deaf where they actually, they taught um, to, do the alphabet through touch on your hand. And like, that's how like she started learning. Cause I was like, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be mean, but I was telling Frankie, I was like, oh, okay, look, if you're born deaf, cool, you can write a book. If you're born blind, you can write a book because you can learn from speech. But if you're deaf and blind, how do you learn to ever how communicate you know where you can write a book? You, you, yeah, cause you can't talk to somebody to write it for you. And you can't also write it because you can't see. But I guess she learned through the alphabet that way, and I guess that's how she wrote. How did she I even know read. what the alphabet was in the first place? That's what I was trying. To, well, I guess she had her hearing for the first nineteen months, which is not a lot. But I mean, you oh, do okay. learn a lot when you're little. So she probably, you know, like you don't notice, but you know, if if you're a kid, you do learn a little bit during that time. You know, obviously yeah. a lot. It's like the super important time. But yeah, I'm still a little confused. You know, I'm not, I'm not calling her out. Oh. Hold on, hold on. What? It's nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. Are you drinking a beer? Oh, yeah. I told you I was going to have a beer. I'm dying. Yeah, you are dying because you got drunk last night, ladies and gentlemen. My wife got real drunk last night and was real mean to me. And <laughs> it was so, real mean to me. <laughs> so, what am I supposed to do? Wake up in the morning and just take care, take care of her and, and supple her to, to awakeness? No. I got out. I I'm having. I have shit to do. I'm doing it right now. I'm, I'm fucking grinding. I need you to help me. Good luck. Are you live? Mm-hmm. For who? I'm recording the podcast with Corey. Live? Not live, no. Hi, Monica. Oh. Corey said hi. Hi, Corey. She said hi, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like I said, she got drunk and were mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell her, uh, babe, I have to watch this fucking movie for the podcast. What are you doing? Like, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. And then eventually I was like, I'm gonna watch it. So I just watched it. But, yeah. the, but dude, dude, can I also say, do you have a thought? Say your thought. 
Oh uh, no, I was just I, I was literally gonna just say, yeah, yeah, Helen Keller must have had the bomb. I and then, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. She had some fucking uh, telepathic uh, orgasms, bro. She gave that fire throat. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! That still makes no sense to me. How a person who would know uh, how you could write a book, how you can even develop we should, hey, we should, language. We should read her book, bro. I, I've never read it. I wonder. I wonder what. I don't even know what the fuck it's about. Is it about? I if it's life? just a bunch of dots. It's just dots. It's just lines. It's not. A, <laughs> All right, I'm fucking up. We're gonna go too hard. Uh, uh, I will say, I want to say, I want to know, I want to know. Uh, Amazon Prime Video is absolute fucking trash. If you watch anything oh, yeah. on there with ads, it's fucking sucks. Fuck. Bullshit, bro. I ended up renting it for three ninety nine because the movie was thirty minutes longer with the ads. I was like, fuck yeah. that. I was like, I'll just fucking rent it. It's fucking already long. dumb, dude. I feel like it was like it was like watching it on TV, dude. It was like watching a. They movie just on started cable. doing that shit too. So stupid, so trash. It's, it's fuck. See, fuck Bezos, bro. That's what I told mm-hmm. you. And he failed my drug test. And you know what? I read on Twitter yesterday that motherfucking Amazon is uh, in the next month or two. They're planning on stop testing for marijuana, and they're gonna start investing in all these things to uh, like, like all these pro marijuana and like pro uh, legalization. And I was really? like, fuck you guys. I was like, I just got, I just literally failed my drug test for weed. Are you sure it was weed? Ago. Did they tell you? No, it was weird because I, I actually, for once, was good, and I hadn't done drugs in like three weeks before that, and it was a saliva test, so there's no way it could have been anything else. You should have so told them was, like how much, how, how like how how fuck how bad was it like? How, <laughs> how, how, how nah, bad bro. Okay, feel? you know what? So they put that. You know, I probably got fucked. They put the 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 cotton swab, and when I did it for staters, that shit was like quick, and like I'd done the same thing. I had smoked, like eight hours before the staters one and i smoked a cigarette and blah blah blah, and i passed and for the amazon i stopped smoking 13 hours in advance and i did not pass and uh but that shit they left i had to keep that shit in my mouth for like 10 minutes and then my gums even started bleeding and i told her too i was like i was like hey my gums bleeding on it i was like is this gonna affect the test she's like no you're good throw it in there and i was like fuck i was like that's probably where i got 10 minutes okay so it's it says it says zero to ten minutes until the light turns blue but that shit didn't turn blue for until like almost literally like almost 10 minutes it was like almost the whole time because i was waiting and i asked her i was like hey can i take this out soon because i started getting nervous i was like man this is a long time <laughs> this shit's they're gonna pick up something in here <laughs> like you know they're like shit. we we can tell you did acid in 2012 uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fucking wild so, uh, man. fuck that shit but- yeah, dude. So uh, that 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 happened. Fuck Amazon. But yeah, back to what you were saying. Yeah, fuck those ads, dude. That's stupid. They just started doing that shit too. It's yeah. dumb. It was annoying. It was so frustrating, and it just wasn't working. Like I, sometimes, because I was streaming it to my TV, and the ads would come up, and it would totally just just crash. So I had to reset it over and over and over and over and over. So it's that shit was trash, and it just ruins the fucking movie having to get interrupted with ads. It totally ruins the movie. No, yeah, yeah. That's why. Uh, that's why I just ended up renting it. Once right. I saw the difference in time too, I was like, "Fuck that." That's that's a damn. I didn't even know it shows you the difference in time. That shit's crazy. But um, so so I, bro- let, I, I, I just want to talk about the movie a little, like visually. Like, yeah, I think visually it was fucking beautiful. Like, it really had some dope ass shots, and I love those still shots where it's kind of boring. Like when he's like at the very end when he's walking with his jacket to go like you don't know what he's gonna do he's just walking up the stairs and you know <clears throat> I like I kind of like that shit you know I like the visual aspect of it I think those kind of long shots those beautiful visual shots with like a lot of background audio they they tend to like do a good job of like throwing you into that moment you know what I'm saying if you you get yeah. lost in it kind of um, dude but, so so that that um like what you're saying that that last scene definitely I think. If it wouldn't have been in it, the movie would have sucked. Like I, I the like sucked, sucked. Like the la- the ending was cool, and it, it, it was interesting too because I like how like he smashed their heads. And at, my first thought was, how's this other dude not waking up? But then I was like, oh shit, he can't yeah. fucking hear that he's yeah. fucking killing him right next to him. And dude, the way he did it like three times on each of their heads, and like you'd see the blood splat on the pillow. I was like, man, this is a really effective scene. Like yeah. it's really violent without being like overly like it seemed realistic like that's how mm. it would look if you walked into someone's room and did that to them yeah and it was just intense you know and that, i mean it was intense before well, too when they were drowning him and they fucking hit the bottle on his head and he was just in the water because i was thinking he was dead but then i was like oh well he probably well, woke up once he started drowning that probably woke him up you know maybe yeah that's true but it, i would was think it, was all that you start kicking in yeah 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 that's true that's true because yeah, yeah. 
Once you start, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, because he would have flailed out yeah, probably. You know? I think that's a yeah, common that thing. Was the only... yeah. yeah, but fucking, uh, I, the, the, they hit him with a wine bottle, right? It yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I was wondering. I mean, no, I thought he was dead. Kind of, but... I kind of thought he was dead. Yeah, it, I thought he was dead too. I was like, oh shit, is this how it's ending? Yeah. You know, and then uh, so he I, I will say at the, at the very at the very end, he only killed like the four boys. The four ones yeah the four main dudes the four like main boys yeah yeah so what yeah. happens with the girl they don't even i think that was kind of weird they didn't like there was no like conclusion to that really except maybe she yeah. was like fuck this dude i'm out like but he took her passport and tore it up yeah i i i don't know bro I there's a there lot of conclusion. unanswered questions just, just like there was no like you know like i was thinking uh when i was coming when we were gonna start it like i was like okay wait what's the main character's name and i was like well, fuck, I don't fucking know any of their names True. because everything is literally sign language. They never yeah. say anybody's name, you know? Um, it's uh, and, it's and also, It is a good movie, though. No, I, I would be interested to watch it with somebody who knows sign language yeah. and can tell me exactly what's going on, you know? Yeah. Like, or what they're saying, I guess. Don't, don't, don't you think... Um, isn't there, like, a sense of, like, feeling vibrations that deaf people have? And don't you think that... If there was somebody being murdered right next to you with a fucking huge ass with a with a dresser, you'd kind of feel that and wake up to it. I was thinking that too. I was yeah. thinking it because your senses would be probably a little stronger, and yeah. like even though like they wouldn't hear the noise, yeah, like that was a heavy thing, and the bed was shaking, yeah, and the rooms weren't huge, you know, yeah, for sure. I but, think they were uh, but it was a, it was a cool scene though. I, I, I it was definitely cool. I, I but I, I will say I think that there was like whoever did the choreography for a lot of the action scenes seemed to me to suck. Like the fight scene and the, and towards the beginning, if you watch them and it's hard to do when you just have one still shot to have a legitimate fight scene, the way that was, yeah. it's hard to do. Oh, it's, when he gets jumped in. Yeah. It looked to yeah. me, it, it looked, it looked comically fake instantly. You know, when we watched it, I actually, I actually felt like it, it felt, I felt like, in movies, when you you know normally see fights like that, they add those extra sounds in where you hear the thuds and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because like when most people fight, unless you get like cracked, cracked, you don't hear every fucking like. No, yeah. Like in movies, it's so loud, you know. And I kind of like this where like you didn't really hear the punches yeah. like super loud. It seemed more realistic, like a more of a real fight with just like you said, it's just this one shot of these people fighting. But you are right. When it first started, I was like, oh, this seems a little. A little kind of fake but then after i as it was going on i was like but this also kind of seems like maybe this is not exaggerated for once and i'm so used to seeing fights in movies yeah. or the sensational fights you see online which are really wild but not all fights are really like that you know exactly. some I, fights are you know just like little it, fights that don't end up huge maybe it wasn't the choreography but the main actor he the way he was acting and if you watch the scene back he he seemed like it was he was doing a dance kind of like like he could tell the next move he was supposed to do. I'm supposed to get punched by this guy. Now I'm supposed to get hit yeah. by this guy. You know, you can kind of visually see that. Um, and and that's and I don't know. I don't know why. I don't normally notice things like that, but for whatever reason, I did there. But it definitely yeah. wasn't something like big enough to where it like fucked up the whole movie or anything. But yeah, oh. it was just something I noticed. Speaking of the main character, how do you feel about him? I honestly felt I he like. Sucked. Yeah, and in a way, I felt like he was kind of the bad. I mean, obviously, these dudes were bad dudes too, but I felt like in a way, he was kind of the bad guy. You know what I mean? Like he was kind of, he was kind of stupid. Like he should have never fell in love with that girl. He knew what he was doing, and then he got mad at her for doing what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And like, and then he was just, and then that last scene where he goes up and like has sex with her again, it kind of seemed like he was forcing it on her. You know? Oh, he, and, he did. Like, oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, that was a rape scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like so, I was like, oh, and then after I was like. He's kind of the bad guy right now, you know? Like, he seems like the bad guy, if anything, you he know? Just ra and, he uh, literally raped a girl who just had an abortion. Like, that is fucking violent. Yeah. Wild. And then he went and I'm killed the four dudes. Yeah. It was a, it was a weird scene. It I was, think he should have uh, killed her. Weird. I was waiting for him to go kill her. I thought he was going to. Yeah? Yeah. I was like, if he kills her right now, I'm going to love this movie. But he didn't, so I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it to... I, I don't know. Yeah. I felt like... I, I honestly, when he, when I thought he died at that part and when he was in the, when he got hit with the wine bottle, I was like, oh, you know, it's not bad. Maybe he deserved to die. Like he's, he was kind of a bad guy too, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I, I just thought he was a little bitch about it. Like, you know, like, like, you know, like can't turn a hoe into a housewife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and if you think you can, you know, that's your problem, you know? Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, so I felt like he was kind of the bad guy, but um, definitely an interesting movie. And I feel like the the title definitely lends to it, like you know, because it was very tribal, like you know, it was very like like True. you said the 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 deaf c- community was almost like its own tribe, and he was like the outcast at the school, you know, and he tried to be part of it, but he fucked it up. Yeah, it was a uh, super interesting. I thought you were when you hit that soundboard. I thought you were gonna hit a. <coughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Diddy in the morning. <laughs> no, I, I like the I like the 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 actress who played the the hooker he fell in love with for whatever, for whatever reason. A lot of her her facial expressions and a lot of things she did seemed really believable. And this the the main actor dude too. He visually he looked. Like he did well, but I think he. Oh no, yeah, they were all good in the movie, but yeah, I wonder if they're all deaf. I was, I was gonna, I was wondering that too. I'm sure. I would I think. Been, but I also, I would. Are the sound guys deaf? <laughs> <laughs> On the crew, <laughs> maybe, maybe everybody. I, you know, I'm looking it up. There right could now. be a sound guy who's deaf, Corey. <laughs> no, he's holding I'm not the, looking at that. He's holding the mic. Up. He's deaf. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm looking up the whole. Uh, the like, whole was the director crew. deaf? Like, there had to be obviously there had to be people in the crew who were not deaf. Like, you know, the guys who held the microphones and shit like that. But yeah, Man, yeah. and also people, if you, if you are watching this and you want to watch it, do realize that there is another movie called The Tribe in 2016 that is not the movie that we're mm. doing. And there's also a TV show that was on for several years called The Tribe that when you normally type in those two things pop up before this movie pops up. Uh, for some reason, you have to type in like the tribe movie or the tribe death if yeah. you want it to pop up first mm. uh, from 2014. Let's see, though. Um, OK, here we are. Let's check it out. Let's let's go to the the trivia section of I we should do this. Oh, more. OK. Yeah. All, so all the actors are deaf and the um, yeah, all the actors are actually deaf. Wow. Um, let's see. Oh, what the fuck? Dir- the director. Uh, Miroslav Slaboshvitsky does not understand sign language and had to have interpreters on the set to communicate to make sure the actors were sticking to the script. Wow. So he was How legitimately just trying to make a movie that just like had no dialogue. Well, that's that's the director. So yeah, that's what I mean. I, like he 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 wasn't interested the in writer. a sign language movie, you know? Yeah. How um, could they have made? How could any? Okay, go ahead. Sorry for I going around. Let's see. Oh, earlier too, we were brought this up. So the actors communicate in Ukrainian sign language. Mm-hmm. Um, anecdotally, u- users of Western European sign language could understand about seventy percent of the signs. There, they said se- about seventy percent of the signs are pretty much similar to like our sign language as well. But uh, the rest of it's not. Um, I'm trying to see if there's. I want to see about the writer because like the uh, the director obviously they said is not deaf. So. Was the writer deaf? Like, you know, like, uh, let me see. Where the fuck is the writer? Oh, no. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. The the writer. Yeah, you're right. The writer is also not deaf. I mean, the writer is the director. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's interesting. He must have just wanted to do a movie about deaf people, I guess. I think, I think what, he, what he, to me, what I'm getting is that he wanted to make a video, a movie where there's no dialogue for the entire movie. And I feel like I've read this somewhere where he, and he just wanted to see how it would be portrayed, how people would respond to a movie with no dialogue and just having to follow along with the plot line uh, visually and, and using body language. And I think that what's interesting is like, I don't necessarily know if you can make that kind of movie and it also be like believable or, you know, something that people can receive you know w- without there being sign language like name another way that you can make a movie without dialogue without sign language being in it yeah you're right i'm looking at it up. it says that he wanted to do a contemporary silent film ah so like a, i have one of my questions yeah. i had too is this a silent yeah movie? so yeah so this is and he also says in this interview i can't read the whole thing because this is i have to pay to read i fucking hate that a lot of these news sites do this now but uh he said that uh, he kind of he remembers the secondary school uh, that he went to and that there was a uh, deaf children at the state boarding school that was opposite. 
He said, we used to hang out with the deaf kids, but usually we just fight. <laughs> but I can't read the rest of the article because it says I have to pay, which is fucking stupid. But uh, yeah, so he, but there, there's some, uh, it is contemporary silent film written by somebody who's not deaf. That's pretty crazy. I wonder, so I wonder how, and I, don't know, I wonder if it was frustrating at times oh, to sure. be the one person not deaf. Like, you know, it's like, you know, like, I would think, I would think it would be like, uh, I mean, it's not the same thing, but have you ever seen this movie, Blindness? Blindness, no. Um, oh, bro, it's it's pretty crazy, actually. The movie's crazy. The book's crazy as fuck, too. But it's, you've read uh, a lot of books and seen a lot of movies, dude. I always you, you like you always you you you've... dude. It's it, it's interesting. We should actually maybe do it, but uh, it's interesting. It just makes me think of him being the only. I won't. Obviously, there was probably other people who could hear on set, but you know, of the actors, because in blindness, like the story is, it's a, there's a, um, a virus that goes around and infects like everybody in the population. Everybody goes blind. They just see white, everybody in the world, except for one girl who's immune. And it, the movies, the book and the movie are about her, mm. but it's so fucking brutal. Like it's so brutal mm. because even though she's the only one who can see, she she sees as society kind of falls because everybody goes blind at once so people don't know how to react you know if everybody yeah. went blind at the same time so kind of society falls apart and she's the only one witnessing it so she ends up in this like place with uh like this like shelter with all these other blind people and even though she's the only one that sees she has to pretend that she doesn't because like everybody's kind of like they'll turn on her if they know and it's like it gets crazy and she sees all the shit all the things the blind people do to each other like they're raping each other and hurting each other thinking that nobody can see them but she sees it all and it's such a crazy it's actually really brutal that but book? it makes me think of that i wonder if it was ever like yeah the book and the movie the movie is yeah the movie is pretty bad too but the book's like pretty brutal but um the yeah i wonder if it was yeah, I wonder if he ever felt like that. Maybe I should act like I'm deaf. <laughs> so they don't get mad at me. I can't hear you. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't mimic it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going off on it, and I don't mean to. No, I, I, right. have, uh, I have respect for the deaf. Bro, you uh, literally they, do it as fresh a fresh to deaf. <laughs> fresh to deaf? <laughs> Uh, shit, what does that yeah. even mean? What does that saying even mean? I think fresh death. Death was like a. Is it fresh a, to death? It's fresh to death, right? Yeah, D E F or D E A F. I, I think yeah, I don't know if it means like it's D E F. Like death was like a slang term back in the yeah. day, like okay. death comedy jam, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fresh to death. I'm looking at. <laughs> this, this might be the whitest thing you've ever done on the podcast. What does it fresh is? to <laughs> death mean? <laughs> No, like I know what it means, but I mean, like I was wondering if what it are, had anything. What to are the do. origins? Like, That's still why. Yeah, what are the origins? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> oh, I love you, dude. I miss doing this shit. I miss this. Fuck. I know, bro. We've been fucking lagging it on the episodes, both of us. I, no, I, I it's have. Been kind I of have, hard. I have. I've been in a weird. I would. I was doing this. This week, honestly, today, honestly, worked the best. The rest of this yeah. week would have been real hard, just because, like, I'm still getting used to that job. Yeah. So it would have been kind of hard during the week. But um, no, yeah, dude, I fucking miss it too. Like, uh, I was excited to do this one, especially like I wasn't. With all the, the deafness. <laughs> <laughs> Once I watched the movie, I started getting more excited because I started like developing ideas. But for whatever reason, like this, just the idea of watching this movie kind of like cringed me out, you know. And then I started watching. Then I watched it like the first fifteen minutes of it one night when I was drunk, and I, that's when I was texting you and shit. I was looking like that. That gave me a bad vibe from the bad first impression. But I will say, you know, I would, I would actually like to watch the movie again, just having a better understanding of it, and just like, you know, not being in such a weird like expecting to be like uncomfortable type of thing. You know? Yeah, I think I I wish I would have been able to see this movie in like a movie theater type setting. That's yeah. the only thing. Like you know, was it in the? But I mean, it's. Uh, like not big theaters. I think like independent theaters and stuff. But um, I wish. Uh, not not. I wish. I I don't know though that I would really have a desire to watch it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, not that I, I I wouldn't be against it either. Like if somebody wanted to watch it, it wouldn't be like, oh no, I don't want to watch it because it's like uncomfortable. I just felt like it was a cool movie for what it was, and I think like if like somebody's interested in film, and like it's definitely like an interesting thing to see because yeah, like like sure. the, yeah it's a contemporary silent film there's not many films like it especially that exists today so it is cool like for the artistic value of it True. But it's not a movie that like 
I feel like I have to see again, like, yeah, like climax, <laughs> like climax. I, I, it's funny because I hated climax. I'm not I hated it, but I was I, uncomfortable with climax before we did the podcast, and now I literally love that movie. And dude, like, I, I like I, I would put it on for enjoyment. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, dude. And, yeah, and imagine we could. I, I know that they rent out movie theaters, but I don't know what the rules are as far as like having them play whatever you want. But imagine we rented out a theater like in Laverne or down the hill somewhere, and we just invited all our friends to come. It's only a hundred bucks. Climax, climax in the theater with the Bro. loud fucking music. That would be so when, tight. I think you can. Uh, so I think it's like 150 if you want to watch a new movie, and then I think it's 100 if you want to watch an old. Yeah, I wonder what, dude. That would be, that be so dope. dope if we all the yeah, movies. Honestly, honestly, I'd get fucked up in that theater. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Like, we'd have to reenact the dance sequence. Just you were sure in the theater. <laughs> we'd have to, dude. Have you ever seen when they like present the film and like all the actors are like do like little uh, dance numbers? I think I sent you a couple of links. Yeah, you sent it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it made me feel better. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them where they they present the film and like the way they present the film and like they do like I don't. They did a lot of like. Per- I don't know what it is, like a like a discussion, like on stage or whatever. But before they do the, yeah. the discussion, they come out and they do those dance numbers. There's a bunch of videos of them doing it everywhere. And the little boy That's who so dies cool. comes out. Like all of them are all just dancing. And it, that to me is kind of one of the cooler things about climax specifically is like there's like a family. It's like almost like a like a cultural. No, not cultural. What what is it like when you like join like a tri- tribal thing? It's like. Like a tribe. It's yeah. It's kind of like a tribe. It's a uh, no. It's it's like a. I don't know. It just has this weird like. It just seems like from reading too about it, like they just all had a really good experience yes. making the movie, and now like they have some sort of bond because of it. Exactly. Especially, I feel like because of the type of movie it is too. It's so mm-hmm. crazy and out and, there, and, and may- it's like yeah. And maybe because the way they made it, right? The actors almost made the entire movie. That's it was their their yeah. story to tell, and because their story to tell was their story and on top of that they basically kind of lived the story and we experienced their story and then you see them connecting with each other it's almost like you connect in their connections with each other i don't know maybe i'm i drunk too much but i get you i think you get what i'm saying no yeah no i feel you uh, and then i think too is remember he said that they filmed it so quickly like in like yeah. three weeks or something so they didn't even have enough time to like be around each other where they started to hate each other where it was like all oh, he's yeah. i think he said that was the only positive like the only time he made a movie where everybody got along the whole time of filming, yeah, everybody was that. cool with each other. Yeah, and you can see that, like you know, mm-hmm. and it, it's 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 cool. Um, I, I like how we're talking about climax. It's just yeah, such a fuck good movie. The <laughs> 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 Bro, uh, speaking of old podcasts that we've done, I thought you would think this interesting. So for my horror class, I, did I tell you I, I for the second paper I wrote. Uh, I had to write a second paper about a horror movie. It was just like a short one. And like, you have to argue it from like, there's all these different perspectives, but there's one where it's like, um, it's called androcentric. And uh, it's like where you look at a, a film or a piece of work and, and you dissect it. It's like the opposite of feminism in a way, instead of like from a woman's point of view, it's from like a man's point of view. So I actually did, uh, I fucking wrote, um, one on Midsomar and about how Christian is not the bad guy. And the, and what? I even used, yeah, I even used your part about how like the ending was a rape scene and how like, you know, he's, yeah. he is, cause it is like, yeah. and like, honestly, when I went back and did it, I'm not going to lie. So, okay. So there were parts like, yeah, he's under the spell and I, and I agree. He is definitely not the villain, but it was so hard to like try to flip some of the parts in the beginning when he's like, when they're just talking. Cause I was like, man, no matter how I flip it though, he may not be the villain, but he is an asshole, you know? Yes. And, uh, but, yeah, it came out really good. Like, the guy's like, oh, this is a really good paper. I was like, cool. Nice. Like, I was arguing about how Christian, yeah, I was like, dude. Because I, I was struggling that to me. on Can what I should it? write. Can you send it to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll yeah, post yeah. it. I'll post it on the on the YouTube channel. And we can post it on Instagram, <laughs> maybe. That'd be kind of cool, though. Yeah, yeah. Be, all right. Yeah, let me, let cool. me go through it again. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me double check it. But, yeah, that's, that's yeah. so interesting. How many pages? Uh, it's it, this one was short. This one was only, I think it's only like three pages. It's not that's too so, super long, dude. That's so tight. I can't wait to have a fucking, a fucking joy. Dude, fucking it, read it. it is cool. Yeah, it, it was cool too, just because I was like, oh man, like the podcast is actually coming in handy because yeah. this is not something I would have written before we talked about it. Hell so I was like, yeah. this is kind of dope. Yeah, that's I thought so cool. you would think that was cool. Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah, hell yeah, that's so cool. But, um, yeah, so Christian ain't the bad guy. <laughs> oh. And what about the but, homie uh, in this one? Is he the bad guy? Not, he wasn't at first. I, 
Yeah, he wasn't at first. I think he might. That shit was crazy when he bit that fool's neck, too. Mm. I was like, uh, I wanted to see it. I wanted yeah. to see the blood. <laughs> I think but, that... Uh, that uh, I think the best the, the best movies do what the tribe did, what Midsommar did. It's like they add like you don't necessarily have to be, only be the bad guy in the movie. You can be the good guy and end up being the bad guy, and you can be the bad guy and also be the good guy. You know, there's a lot of different layers to yeah. You know, to us as humans, you know, one day we wake up and we're one person, and we wake up the next day we're another person. One day we're the hero, one day we're the villain. I think we know that about ourselves, so we see that in characters and movies and art we watch and it's and we connect with that on a deeper level but it's almost on a level that it's harder to understand than this singular hero villain type of dichotomy you know what i'm saying like yeah the, the, it gets a little mo- old sometimes yeah when somebody is just like mm-hmm. one side of it like it's cool in certain movies like it works but like yeah like from, from what that's I, why game of Th- oh what, what were you saying oh go ahead go ahead go ahead I'm just gonna. I'll no, say I your was, Game of Thrones things, and then I'll, I'll say. Where. Oh no, I was gonna say that's always what I felt like was so attractive about Game of Thrones as a show True. and and a book that yeah. that like you had characters like Tywin who was a bad was a bad guy, but at the same time there are parts I really like Tywin or just like mm-hmm. Jamie how he has a, a character arc like they they made it so or just like the Hound they made these people okay yeah they may be bad people but they're not necessarily all bad there's like you know like yeah. people are not just one thing you know yep. you can be good like you said you could be good and bad most that's what life is it's like, not you're not just one thing it's not this cookie cutter representation of yeah, us and, not and, and black just, and like, white you like, know like the same well like the same thing they did with ned at the end of the first season you know what i'm saying like that's not normal for the main character the story you're following along to just be gone at the end of the season so they did a lot of things that were not normal and i from what i've i've understood is that they did the same thing with a lot of comic books back in the day that it used to be super one dimensional like superman was only he you know there were no there was no arcs and he was just yeah. like the the hero and he would save the day no matter what and then they started realizing people were getting bored so they started a- yeah. a- adding story arcs and 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 weaknesses and and I, and uh it got it got it, things got way more one dim- uh, you know three-dimensional or whatever the fuck multi-dimensional and that's where you ended up with you know you start at superman who could who saves lois lane no matter what you know that'll save the day and then you fucking end up at fucking uh the dark knight with you know where the, yeah the guy you like the most is the joker you know what i'm saying it's i think it's just a it's it's a representation of us as humanity and how much more complex we're getting in general i think yeah i actually really like that um like a lot i mean there's a lot more things coming out like that now especially um mm. like watchmen i think watchmen honestly though is like the first thing that was really like that like comic wise mm. like the actual comic book watchmen because like that whole thing is about like you know there's superheroes called the watchmen but who's watching them like they're the mm. superheroes and they're keeping us safe but who's protecting us from them if they ever want to fucking turn around and flip it you should watch the boys dude the boys is all about that it's all about how we have these superheroes that exist with us and they keep us safe but at the end of the day if they really wanted to fuck shit up and if they're human at the end of the day too uh that you know that it's like it could be a really bad thing if you have superpowers and you're yeah. an asshole you know like yeah. it's it's I, I think that's it's really interesting and the superman have you seen brightburn bro no brightburn it's just brightburn not brightburn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, brightburn is uh this movie it came out uh, roy's in it uh from the office he's the dad oh. but uh um his son has superpowers and he's like he's young like eight or nine and uh but he's he becomes a little asshole because he has superpowers and he becomes like a little kid like he, he's acting like a little kid but he has superman type powers and he ends up like killing his whole family and he ends up killing him. but the actual <laughs> movie is actually supposed to be about um it's supposed to be superman if superman was raised and was uh it didn't become good like he became like a spoiled little brat and that's like how it starts and then at the end of the movie too there's little clips in the end where they're talking about like somebody under the sea too i don't know if they're planning on doing more but it's like kind of referencing like almost like there's all of the um the uh justice league but they're all bad you know like as if they were like born in that's a different it's like a different reality yeah it's cool the movie's all right but like the actual like the idea of it is like oh that's really fucking cool that like cool. i didn't know he was supposed to be um superman but he's supposed to be like superman yeah. if he like grown up grew up bad um, that's dope that sounds dope. what is it called yeah. uh brightburn you should check it out it's a short movie it's still cool to watch like it's definitely interesting you know yeah. and then roy's in it dude roy's been in a lot 
I've been seeing Roy in a bunch of shit. Yeah? Yeah, he's, he's in the show. You, guy. you should watch. Yeah, he is. You should watch <laughs> Mayor of Easttown, bro. Mayor Have of Easttown. Have you heard of that? No. It's, it's with Rose from uh, Titanic, Kate Winslet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, ju- it just ended last week. It's uh, it's only one season. It's not HBO. It's fucking it's good. You, uh, should, you should watch it. You'll like it. That's why I've been... Frankie bought this vape. This isn't even a fucking weed. This is a tobacco vape. Ew. And I've been just hitting it. I just... It's it's kind of nice. I've been, like, using it sometimes. Uh, it's kind of nice, like, if I don't want to... Like, because I've been smoking weed still. But it's yeah. kind of nice, like, when... Like, for this, like, I didn't want to get too high... I, I felt you. like during the drug one, I kind of was like a little spacey. So I was like, oh, I'm going to just hit this. And it helps like take the edge off without I feel having feel to get. I'm thinking about stone. getting, there's this, this company I called Cushy. <laughs> I feel that. There's a, I feel there's this company called Cushy Dreams that sells uh, CBD flour that you can buy online legally. Oh, like weed? It's like, like weed. No, it's like actual weed. weed, but it's just CBD. There's no THC. I, l- I like the CBD pens. I'm not going to lie. Like mm. they do like, um, they have a stizzy that's like, uh, it's like, I think it's either half or like three quarters CBD and then just a little THC. And that shit's dope because like, it does get you high still, but like, I definitely, when I, when I hit that, like, it feels like it <laughs> relaxes me, you mm-hmm. know, like it feels like, oh shit. Like, okay. Yep. Okay. I, 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 get, I get the CBD edibles sometimes and I, I like to okay. use them when I have like company or like I'm with my mom, Monica's. Yeah, no, they're cool. Uh, David and like <laughs> Lily always have them now too. And like, they'll give them to us when we go drinking with them. And like, they're kind of cool. Cause like, they kind of relax me and like, it makes me not like try so hard. It doesn't get me high or anything, but it makes me, yeah, it makes me not want drink as much either. It's yeah. like, I'm more relaxed because like I'm, I'm already feeling good, you know? So it's, it's cool. You're not, it's you're nice. not drinking to your insecurities. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're not like drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Any I'm not lull drinking in the moment. Better. You know what I noticed? Yeah. Like any lull in the moment, when there's like when you're hanging out with with friends, it's just natural thing. You just grab, even when during podcasts, you just grab this drink or you hit something and smoke it. You know what I mean? It's like there's these things, natural th- rhythms we have where we just smoke and or we drink, and it's funny. It's like just natural to do at any. I don't know. It's just just weird little it's our natural habitat. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I was thinking yeah. somebody else. I was speaking. To, maybe this is a little uh, off topic, but we'll, maybe we'll get back to it. But I just somebody I heard somebody say recently like. Talking about how, like, smoking, you know, you get together with your friends, you smoke, you, and you, that's kind of what you do. Um, but they talked about, like, how, why is that so bad, you know? Well, you get together in a group of friends, and you practice breathing. You, it's basically like a breathing exercise that you're doing with your friends. Like, And that is something, like, yeah, in a lull, in a moment, maybe you want to do a, a breath exercise. Like, it's really not as, as I don't know. There's, there's kind of, like, a, a positive aspect Health, health wise, yeah. to 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 smoking consistently or drinking and, with people too. Yeah. You know, I I think it's like it's like a social thing. You know, mm-hmm. like because like I like, I mean, yeah, I I don't know. Like most most drugs, most things, alcohol. Like, yeah, like I I do the. I mean, smoking's different. Smoking weed, I love smoking by myself too. I like I, I don't mind. I don't mind smoking weed by myself and just chilling all day. That's cool. I would too. rather smoke, by but myself. like, but. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times I would, too, because then there's no effort on having to talk and mm-hmm. shit. But like most other things, I, I, I definitely like doing them socially. You know, I yeah. mean, psychedelics are a little different, but most other things like alcohol, it's like, you know, they are. They're good for social, you know, what do they call them? See, social lubricants. You yeah. Know? And like they're they're good. You So what, one thing that I've I've kind of started to, to get to a point of like thinking about is like when it comes to social lubricants, there's a pro and con. Okay, like let's say I put fucking alcohol. You know, I think about it. There's pros and cons to it, you know? And I've realized like maybe not alcohol per se because I think there's more pros, but like let's say cocaine. Like cocaine ha- is, a, in my opinion, the best social lubricant there is. Better than alcohol because you're more, you're more cohesive and you're more kind of like there. To a certain extent, I think it's the best social yeah. lubricant. I'll yeah, yeah. You know, let me preface that. But there's pros and cons to it, right? And I've realized like the pro of a social lubricant in the sense of cocaine or, or alcohol, which I think are some of the best, maybe MDMA. Uh, but I think MDMA is a really good one. I think yeah. MDMA is more like an introspective kind of openness rather than. I mean, but I think it, it could be really good true. too, you know? True, like, true, true, for true. like, uh, yeah. yeah. 100%, 100%. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for sure. Meth, methamphetamine in general, that entire group, you know, for sure, great with that. Um, but basically, but it's not necessarily something that I use as a social lubricant, which is why I guess I wouldn't necessarily focus on it. But there's pros and cons. 
And I'm starting to wonder if I need a social lubricant anymore, kind of. Like in those situations where I feel lulls in the moments or I need a social lubricant, maybe I just need to start working on myself and being able to be okay in those moments rather than, you know, feeling like I, I need to do this or that. So it's kind of like yeah. lately I've been trying to teach myself to not drink so much and to, to really act on trying to just be okay in social interactions and not be so yeah. like on some bullshit, which is easier said than done. But basically my main point is there's pros and cons and I've been trying to look at the pros and cons of every drug I do uh, or any substance no, I or thing you. I drink yet. I feel you like with alcohol and substances, it's like, instead of, okay. So with like alcohol, so it's cool. Like if we hang out, it's cool to drink, to add to the experience, but it's not cool if you're drinking <laughs> to make the experience. It's like, 100%. if you, if you, if, if, if you're going into it thinking I need to drink, I need to do this to make this a good time. It's not a good idea. If you're there, you're having a good time and you want to add that in to add to the good time. I think it's like a perfect, you know, I but yeah, I feel you. Like I've been into those situations where I feel like, Oh, we're going to this party and we're not bringing that. Like, well, it's going to be weird. We should get it, you know? And it's like, no, like it should be like, Oh, we're having a good time. We want to do it. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah let's yeah. add to it. But I shouldn't be like, I need this to go and do this. I need this mm -hmm. to be in this situation. You know, like yeah. I need to have a little drinks if I'm going to get through this dinner or whatever, yep. you know, no, I, I need know. to smoke a little something to be able to go to this or do this or whatever the fuck. Like you're, you're on the way out the door and you're like, fuck, I need to take in, in your mind. I need to take that last hit. If I don't take that last hit, I'm going to fucking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do that all the yeah, time. Before so you're like, work. Uh, I'll, I'll go outside and I'm like, you know what? There's one little hit. I, sh I should just do it now. Why save it? Right. <laughs> Let's get it. Exactly. So, so it's like, it's like, it's weird. This weird, like substance addiction addiction kind of thing uh, lifestyle that i just i think we all have we all have these tendencies yeah. like i said to take a drink take a sip or take a smoke whatever it's fine but it's like once you kind of like start to see it it's hard to like i don't know like you start to see yourself doing it so it's just like you start to steady yeah. yourself i don't know that's kind of where i've been the last two two days and, and, and not two days two weeks or a few weeks it's not necessarily just not even just that but mostly just a lot of introspection and just like existentialism bullshit and it, then it, it started, and then what it all ended up being is like about creation, about what I want to make and what I'm having fun doing or not doing. And it's just, I just got in my head the last few weeks, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. The tribe was cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, tri the tribe was, the tribe was cool. That, that came out of nowhere. I forgot we were talking about the tribe. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was definitely, it was definitely good. I, I don't know. How much more I have to say on the actual yeah, movie, I yeah. but I mean, I also don't feel like I want to stop talking. I feel so. you. No, keep going. <laughs> no, keep going. Uh, I'm not trying yeah, to... the fucking yeah. um, dude last week because uh, the show got canceled uh, yeah. that I was gonna do with Dado. It got canceled like last minute, so uh, we ended up just going. I just text Dave and I was like, "Hey, bro," because he wanted us to come over, and I was like, "Well, the show got canceled." I was like, "Can we set up and like?" I'll just perform there, you know. So yeah, I just did it yeah. In his back I, yeah, I just did it in his backyard. There wasn't like a lot of people or anything. It was just like him and like you know Frankie and everybody. And then um, and uh, yeah, dude. But doing that and then like honestly getting ready last weekend too. When I thought it was happening, it was different. Like it it, mm -hmm. it was it was a different feeling because like first it kind of came out of nowhere. Like Dad would hit me up and was like, "Oh, you should write these people and see if you could perform." And I was like, oh, "Okay." I'll hit him up. I was like, but I was thinking like doubtful the shows in like three weeks, whatever. Like, but then they did, they got back to me. And then at first I was kind of like still doubtful. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Like, just cause like I, it's been like over two years since I had performed or done anything like that. And, uh, I don't know, dude, but this time, like it was weird. I was telling Frankie too. Like, uh, I, I didn't even really invite people or, or post it really until the day before I posted it. I, and like part of me wanted to, but, I was telling Frankie, like, part of me feels like, like, I love, I love when everybody comes. Like, I love when the homies come. It's a great fucking time. It makes me feel better, more comfortable. And I felt like that's why I didn't want to do it. I was like, because I feel mm. like I invite all these friends because I want to be comfortable when I go out there and know, like, I, I can look in the crowd and see a bunch of people's faces I know. But I felt like with this, I was like, you know, like, it'd be kind of nice to not do that. Like, I'll bring Frankie. I'll go with Dado because he's performing and, like. I'll put it up the day before people want to show up cool, but like, I kind of want to go and be 
uncomfortable. I've been, I, I, mm. I don't know if you've seen it. It's gone around on Twitter many times before, but there's this interview with David Bowie and he talks about that. Like, you know, like, like that's the biggest mistake artists and shit can make is that you start to feel like you start to get comfortable and that's where you want to stay. And it's like, not even just artists with everybody. And it's like, you should be constantly putting yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable, but not uncomfortable yeah. in the sense, like, 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 you know, oh, like, what you're saying. The, the right uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Like something like I should be able to, you know, like if I really do like to perform and do music, then it shouldn't matter if friends are there. I should be able to just go out there and do it. And like, it was cool. Like I was nervous Saturday. I mean, cause it didn't get canceled till the afternoon and I was nervous. And normally when I'm nervous like that, I'll fucking just smoke a lot. I'll fucking watch TV. Like I did the night before I kind of just was like in my head, but then that morning instead, I was like, you know what? And like, instead of sitting here, like, I'm going to fucking write. And like, I wrote like two songs while I was waiting for like to perform later. And it was cool. And like, I don't know, it kind of made me feel better. Like, I really do want to try to perform again soon. Like, it was dope, dude. Like, it just kind of got me back into it. Like, like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I guess now I feel like now that I'm a little older and I'm kind of working on trying to just make money for Frankie and everything here and Paul that now it's kind of cool now that's the main thing on my mind isn't i want to make music and i hope somebody hears it and i'm famous now it's like i want to make music because dude when i was going like not to toot my own horn but i was going through some of the shit i was gonna that i hadn't heard in a long time i was going through my soundcloud and i was like fuck i was like some of these songs are fucking like maybe they're not catchy and maybe not ever good material I was like but some of these lyrics are fucking like like fucking dope and it just made me feel like fuck man like I want to keep making music like and it and and it feels better now because there's no desire to to really care about I don't know about like if anybody else likes it like mm -hmm. as long as it's something that I feel is dope when I make it which I feel like I always knew but I never really lived that way like there are things I I still need to send you that song I wrote that song for Dado shit the other day and I remember I t I wrote, wrote this whole thing and it was like kind of like typical universe existential bullshit and then after I was like you know what I was listening to 21 Savage and I was like, you know what? I'm going to erase this and I'm going to write this song like as if I don't give a fuck. Like these fools write these songs. And then I went back and wrote it. I got to send it to you. And it's fucking dope. And it's like <laughs> ridiculous. Like it's the most ridiculous shit. I showed Frankie. She's like, she's like, this is ridiculous. So I was like, but it's awesome. Right. And then she was singing it later. I was like, dude, I told you like, it's dope. Like it's so stupid, but it's fucking cool because it's like, I don't know, like not thinking about it made it better you know uh -huh. like I, I don't know if that makes sense you know yes, like yeah i get know? it i 100 like, thing I, there's this thing where it's like <sighs> as a young person you have this weird thing where you just do, you don't give a fuck you have this freedom about you where you're not thinking about all these different connections you have to this person and that person and these responsibilities and this and that you, you're just more you just you just do and then the older you get yeah. the more things that enter your 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 life it's hard to find that again you know if, especially if you're not yeah. doing something you just truly enjoy. So and, until yeah. you, and, but then you can do stuff you truly enjoy. And then you start to understand, Oh, I was doing this thing that I enjoyed for the wrong reasons. You know, like exactly. I, I realized yeah. I've made music and did YouTube videos and everything because I just wanted people to like me. It wasn't because I was having fun really. It, I mean, even though yeah. I was, but really what yeah. it, it, I started at all because I wanted people to like me. I thought I would, people would think I was cool if I was a rapper you know dude yeah no uh that's like how it felt when i was listening to these older songs i was thinking about some of them because some of them i hadn't heard in such a long time just because i don't i don't i, I never really performed them i i don't mm. really I, I don't know i just don't listen to myself very much and like some songs i had forgotten some songs that i would click on i was going into thinking oh man I, i'll probably take this off my soundcloud after i listen to it and after i was like no it's a really good song the reason i thought I didn't like it is because when I put it out, I remember at the time thinking some of these songs, these are dope. Then I put them out and they don't get many plays. And in my mind, oh, it sucks. Oh man, I didn't get, nobody's listening. Nobody cares. Nobody's hit me up to say it's a dope song. So maybe it's not dope. But then when I was listening to it, I was like, no, that's bullshit. Like this shit is fucking dope. And fuck everybody else who doesn't think it is. Like I, I even if nobody listens to it, it was cool going back and hearing, just like it probably is for you going back and listening or watching some shit mm -hmm. that you forgot about or maybe in your mind thought oh maybe it's trash now and you go back and it's like oh it's not trash it's like it's it's actually really dope and it's 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 really cool to have it and it just made me want to make more and then dude that yeah. song you sent me 
that you said you didn't like, bro. That shit was dope. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like the I like the way it sounds. I like how it almost sounds jokey, but it's really sad. <laughs> yeah. too, the song yeah. is like super depressing. Yeah, like, it is. And I like that. I feel like it, it gives it has character. You know what I mean? Well, thank like, you. Like, I, I made yeah, it. Just yeah, no, one dude. day, just like I wanted to record. I made another one too. That that one was even. That one's even worse, but. Uh, I, I played it. Yeah, I played it on stream dope, the other. I, I played it on stream the other night, and people all liked it too. I like it. It's just I don't know. It just I don't know. I, it, I think it has potential. To, I could probably make it work, but it, it it was crazy because during that stream, it was last Friday night. I, I streamed and I went and I just started playing all my old music and shit. And yeah, and it was so wild to see. There was like thirty people watching, and we were all nostalgic. Be like this shit is sick. I forgot about this. I forgot about that. And it was me. It was like my old music. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know. I think I think what happens is like, you, you it's starting to get windy. Uh, it, it, it's like, it's almost like because I guess nothing. We never blew up and got famous and six and all these wild things that we see on Instagram and, and YouTube or whatever the fuck else on the internet. It's like we equate ourselves as. Or I, I'll talk speak on myself. I'll speak, I, I equate myself in some lights as a failure because of that um even subconsciously you know i've done a lot of great things and i know that and i try to focus on that but still subconsciously you have this weird feeling of failure mm -hmm. because you're comparing to basically the fucking most successful most lucky most you know whatever the fuck else the most prominent people in the world but it's on your phone, so it doesn't feel like it's the best in the world. It's weird how to, how to explain it. You equate yourself yeah. and, and compare yourself to one of millions of people. Like, and that in and of itself equates failure. Like You equal yourself to failure when you try to do something and it doesn't work out to the effect of the people you see it working out for. It, you equate failure with yourself and even subconsciously. So it's just like when you get that and then you stop making music and then you start having responsibilities and life hits and blah, 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 blah. It, it just, you start to look back at certain things as failures and, but it's good to remind yourself. And it's, and I, but at the same time, I think that it, it's just a, it's kind of like a phase for myself. At least I noticed that like I go through moments of, uh, of, dis of, despair or like like feeling like shit about me myself but mostly i only feel that when i'm not doing shit that i know i need to do or i want to do it's like when mm -hmm. i'm when i'm working the hours i know i need to and i'm paying for what i need to and i and i'm doing this and i'm or i create that's when i'm like oh okay i have to remind myself and i have to just keep going and quit i have to quit yeah beating myself up so much i guess and, well, i don't know i'm ranting now like real rant that was real rant. i don't know where i am that, that that was in a rant no no i i feel you bro like i well we're, we're you know it's the truth you're your own harshest critic you know what i mean yeah and uh but dude i think we're both fucking pretty dope like you know i feel like <laughs> we've we've done a lot you know like yeah. even if it doesn't seem significant because we don't have the views or or the followers or uh, I mean, you definitely have way more than I do, but like, uh, like, you know, even though we don't have what we feel like we should on certain things, like it doesn't take away from the fact that we've still done a lot of things and made a lot of music and like, yeah, honestly, dude, like, especially with your mixing and shit, like we made a lot of shit, like if you hear it, it sounds really professional compared to other things. Like, and maybe oh, yeah. our style isn't like the popular style, but like we've done we've done a lot of shit, you know? And like, mm -hmm. that's how I felt when I was listening to my shit. I was like, man, some of the things I talk about are things that I feel like way heavily on my mind now, but I was rapping about them years ago when I didn't even fully understand them yet, yes, you know? And now right. like when I'm re listening to those songs, that's why they're hitting harder now. Like, yes. I'm like, Oh man, now I'm actually taking these concepts a little more seriously than when I wrote them. But it's interesting that I was wow. even thinking about them back then, you know? It's so crazy. Yes, exactly. It's almost like you're, you're, the past your past self is teaching you a lesson kind of like and mm -hmm. it's like you it's and it's wild. cool to have those you know yeah. it's cool like people don't cool. have that i'm not gonna yeah for i swear before i for a while dude i felt like i wanted to go through my soundcloud and erase so much but then i went and i was like man it's really cool to have some of this shit out here even if nobody's listening to it because in my opinion 
it's fucking dope you know yeah. <laughs> i feel like we're fucking dope like dude the jimmy smith i still want us to do a live stream where we do the jimmy smith and universe dude where we wrap so, the whole thing bro that would be dope I, that's a so live cr- stream of us rapping it it's so crazy you just said that because that's kind of why i wanted to pivot to a little bit is like have you listened to those songs lately the the, the light-hearted ones the first few I well, dude. For remember, we talked about in the beginning of COVID, thinking about doing that. Remember, we had talked about maybe doing a live stream where we did. Yeah, it. I do. I remember talking about that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we did that, I went back and listened to that whole album a couple of times. I was telling Frankie, I was like, man, these songs. So, dude, the last songs too, like Ghost. Ghost is dude, fucking wow. amazing. Dude, fucking. Uh, even I think I might like you. Wait, is that even on that one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that I think I might like you is an amazing song by us too. Like fucking. Amazing. So, like some of the songs are amazing. I, I think that there's going to be this wild, like rev, like reinvigoration re- in the festival scene and the a concert scene. And I think that it's, there's going to be this weird kind of like want of nostalgic music. Like you want nostalgia, but you also want something fresh and new. You know what I'm saying? You want to, you know, and I think that, Get us up. and I think that the Jimmy Smith and universe LP, those first few songs, those, they have that festival, old school but new age never heard this kind of shit like you could never dance in my shoes i could totally see blowing up in the summer of 2021 and me i was thinking because they're not on spotify i was thinking maybe we re-released that shit under some weird like little ep name completely reinvigorate it call it something wild like i don't know it's kind of corny but like something that's going to catch the eye like i don't know like i don't know like I don't know. It's so corny, but I hope you yeah, get what yeah. I'm saying. Quarantine blues or some dumb shit. Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like something cool like that, that'll catch people's eye. Release it as like a four track EP and just see what happens. And maybe even put out a YouTube video, a music video. I think that'd be dope. I've had that idea for a couple, a few weeks now. And I just, I, I keep forgetting to bring it up to you. Dude, we, we should, because uh, I, I see what you're saying. Like with never dancing my shoes and like the way it starts, it, those would be like, I mean, maybe for you and me, more so because true, like, true. we made it and we've listened to it <laughs> but like yeah i feel like those are songs like you could put on and especially because like quarantine and everything's going back to normal yeah. life and it's like a song that like you could open the door and the sun's uh <laughs> smiling and waving at you exactly hey, imagine a video like that and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've been wearing your house yeah. shoes right it shows you wearing house shoes for quarantine for a long time yeah. and then all of a sudden you wear your fucking chucks outside and you're walking down the boardwalk exactly Woo. it could but, be, dude, I, just, I really weird. Think, yeah so yeah We'll talk about it more. I'd be I'd be down for something like that. I definitely though, honestly, a hundred percent. If whenever you're down, dude, I really think we should do a live, a little thirty minute live stream, forty minute, however long the album is, and just fucking set it up, rehearse it, and then actually like do a legit like where we rap back and forth, even kind of have like cues and shit, you know, yeah. like plan it out where it's like a legit online little performance, you know, yeah, like because yeah. dude, it's dope, and some of those songs would be dope. Like if we got them down. And we just practiced it. Like, it could be really cool. Like, Small, I think it'd be really cool. Release the EP with the live performance. And then, like, have a, yeah, a live performance know? with, like, a lot of people there, maybe, even? Or no, that'd Dude, be kind of hard to definitely, get. I mean, honestly, we could definitely get... I mean, I think we should do that. I honestly think we should do it, like, the live stream setup type first. So we could ha- actually maybe have it look cool. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe, like, if it does, like do some numbers or do some cool shit then maybe we can do like another like thing with our friends and shit yeah because i I, yeah i've been uh yeah dude i just want to start performing and making music again and shit and like like you said i do feel like there's gonna be i felt like this because of maybe last weekend because that festival thing that we were gonna do uh seem pretty cool and like kind of pretty like legit in a way i mean yeah. obviously it got shut down so they didn't have like permits but like it seemed pretty cool and i was like man how did i just get on this and i was thinking like i wonder if there's going to be a lot more shit like this from smaller companies too because mm-hmm. quarantine's ending and people want to start going and doing things and you know like it, it i feel like this would be the time now to ch- start releasing music and start trying to yeah. get on little tiny little nothing lineups and then you know like it'd be fucking cool dude i want to fucking i just i don't know when i, you know, I, when I was never, rehearsing I, for the set i was getting hyped i was like i want to even do this like sober like i felt like hyped like i was like fuck this you know, shit is getting me wow yeah it's it's why it's i've always felt like i've never really had as much of an this like Wait, urge can you can you hear that in my no in mine you don't hear any? No. Okay, cool. So the neighbors are blasting music upstairs. Oh, no, I, don't I just making sure it wasn't coming through the mic. All right, my bad. Go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, I, I feel like like uh, like live performing, like 
uh, is never, it's like rapping and DJing. Like, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's kind of like I talked myself out of like really of thinking I could do that or whatever the fuck, or even in, in this idea that that could ever be something I could do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. But you could. I know, but it's just like, I don't know. I just guess I just kind of, I'm realizing like I kind of talked myself out of thinking that that is something that I could ever do. But at the same time, when I imagine success and like, da, 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 I always imagine myself at Coachella on like the main stage, you know what I'm saying? When I imagine like the, the epitome of life yeah. of what I could really accomplish in my biggest of biggest dreams, fucking day set at Coachella main stage, you know, you can never dance in my shoes, you know, fucking, we have, we have a yeah. fucking, I do like five of my tracks, you do five of your tracks, then we come out and just do fucking like 10 of our own tracks, fucking, I you do. know, Rihanna comes out, Elton John, Eminem comes and he threw a fucking drone, you know? Dude, I still think it's, I still think, <laughs> no, dude, I, I swear, I still think it's a legit possibility to be on Maybe not main, but like daytime where like Vic Mensa was with kids. Oh, yeah. Days. Like that'd be fucking dope. Dude. Mm -hmm. Even that, like, like that's, opening that's, set. And, and, dope. That, and that's what I'm saying is mostly is like about this uh, Jimmy Smith in the Universe LP idea. Re one, it's never been released uh, except anywhere except for YouTube. And, and two, it's never been on Spotify. So uh, if we <laughs> if we re-release it with a cool name and this cool idea, maybe even throw a cool like a couple like skits or something, just make it fun and like yeah you know we could re release that music and i think it would hit perfectly with the vibe of of the world and everything opening up and i think we just fucking go from there and make a couple let's music videos it, and bro. see what happens yeah. let's do it i'm done with citrus this week i i, I wrote like i said i wrote two songs last week i recorded that one that you mixed for me the one with yeah. Gatto. It's gotta keep going uh but yeah, dude, I, I want to fucking start doing it. Like, but dude, I'd be super interested in doing the Jimmy Smith in universe. We would we'll definitely need to talk about it. Come up yeah. with some names. And shit. I'm gonna re-listen to the music, do, to the song. Yeah, I'll see. probably re-listen to it today too. To be honest, yeah. and then, uh, dude, yeah, you can never dance in my cool. shoes. And like, what is the other one? There's a few of, of the other ones. Uh, oh my god, I can't even. <laughs> I can't think of it either, bro. But I know what you. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> god damn. I remember. Hi. I remember writing you never you can never dance in my shoes and there was one other one. I remember we wrote it at your house one morning. I, I woke up there and then we did it. And we wrote one of those songs really quick. I think it was that one. It was either that one or It was You Can Never Dance in My Shoes was the one that we wrote at the house. I think we all we wrote most of them at the same like you Yeah, was, we did. Yeah, like together. We gotta do rhythm too, bro. Bring back poison as guests, <laughs> dude. Beautiful. I, it's so wild because like I, that rhythm concept and like the idea of just life being a rhythm. And I think we made that album after we did the fucking heroic dose. And uh, we did. And yeah. I think I think that like a lot of life and when it comes to like you know just the, the idea and of of the universe and how we see and and you know things on fucking on a mo mole molecular fucking you know spectrum like like looking at things like to the really the the core of life and when i think yeah. about when i think about those concepts and those ideas and I listen to podcasts and shit what always comes to mind is rhythm because that's a very popular idea that people talk about it's just this weird rhythmic way to life and how everything is kind of symbiotic and everything's the same thing and i think that that's kind of we were kind of opening the door to understanding is this weird symbiosis of everything in life and these weird complex topics and we kind of interpreted it through just rhythm. And I thought that was, and I think about it a lot. No, dude, um, that's what I'm, that's like what I was kind of trying to say to you earlier. Yeah, like when listening to just our old shit, dude, like we, like I feel like it wasn't as a significant, I mean, obviously we thought they were dope when we put them out. But yeah, and over time, they've just been more, especially like, you know, as we've gotten older, it's just like yeah. the things we we're talking about, we didn't really understand them <laughs> yeah, when no, we were talking we about them, but we were on the right fucking track. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I mean. Like, and it's kind of cool when you hear that when you listen to them. Like, oh man, we were, we were been on to something, you know? Like, because uh. I feel like a lot of the things like psychedelic culture and, and like you said, the things about rhythm and, and life and, and mental health and, and all this bullshit are, are, are very popular things right now. Yeah. But we've been fucking around with them for a long time when they weren't yeah. popular things, you know, like, cause now it's very popular to talk about mental health. It's very popular to talk about psychedelics. It's very popular for all this shit. Yeah. But it's like, if you listen to our own music, we were talking about 
this shit, you know, yeah. existentialism and, and, and life and just it's all this bullshit, you know, yeah. even before like we even really understood it all. And it's kind of it's it's kind of cool. I just feel like, uh, you know, we're just some low key geniuses. I, you know I, mean? <laughs> I think that COVID was and the quarantine whole thing was kind of really good for us as like creators, because it, what it did is like it kind of just allowed us to like re to like, I don't know, reevaluate where we are and, and or at least for me, for sure. And like take a no, step back in sure. creation wise, like what I want to do. And I think this podcast is a, is a, is a, is a beautiful, you know, example of where the evolution is going. Like what we literally mind control came from the idea of MCCM. And we don't even use MCCM at all when it comes to this podcast, but it just was birthed from that, like the logo and everything. Like that's true. It's MCCM, weird. MCCM. I yeah. know, bro. See, fuck. It's cool. It is cool. Like, honestly, like, yeah, when I look at it, like when I was looking at my music too, and like when you say it like that, it is. It's almost like I don't know. It's 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 weird. It's, it's like to see it. Yeah, it's like to see it coming together. It's almost like it is. It's it's all connecting. And like mm-hmm. as we're getting older, it's easier to see those connections, mm-hmm. which makes it kind of cool and kind of gives it some form of narrative, which gives is kind of like cool. Truman Show vibes. Yeah, and it's just like it just gives us. I feel like some form of, like I said, some form of narrative. Like yeah. you know, I feel like there is like a story arc with the universe and with Audible, and and it's cool. And like honestly, too, as I'm getting older, and obviously we're still fucking crazy and still do a lot of crazy shit all the time. But like I feel as I'm getting old, excuse me, it's becoming more of which I've always kind of wanted it to be that way like delineated where there's there's Corey and then there's the universe which i want the universe to be its own thing i want mm. the universe to be the guy who's gonna do molly off your titties mm. the fucking deaf bitch you know what i mean <laughs> and i want Corey, <laughs> and Corey's gonna be the dude who says yeah maybe you shouldn't stay up all night you know like i, I want that that's to be interesting too. like you know yeah that's you know I, I don't know like I, I i want universe to have a narrative like i've always wanted that and like i still want that in a way and I feel like listening to music, it's kind of cool to see that we've been doing that in the music. I just want to do that in my life now. <laughs> like have a, like a clear delineate, a clear. So you want to be bipolar? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> I want to have split personalities, you know? <laughs> no, that's super interesting. Like that's super fucking interesting because I've never thought that way. I've always thought about me audible. I'm, I'm audible. I'm the same. Yeah. I don't, there's no different difference there. And I think that probably is like that because you know, I've had this name for so long and I've like a lot of my friends call me audible. Like a lot of my friends, yeah. you know, exactly. so, so it's just, it's different, but in that, I think that's gets it a lot more confusing, but that's interesting of a thing I thought to have is to, to, to kind of like have that, that different, that, that, that separation, I guess. I never thought about that. Yeah. Ever. Oh, that really? Good that, yeah. I feel like you kind of do, you know, you have like, you're not audible with your family all the time. You know, when you're with your daughters, you're not, you know, like in my mind, audible feels like, I don't know, yeah. audible. When I think about audible, I think about the rapper, the the rager, the legend, you know what mm. I mean? And then when I think about Mikey, I think about my cousin, my wow. kid cousin. I <laughs> like that. Kidding. I no. can see that. Oh, I like that. I like that. That actually makes a lot more sense. That does. I never, I've never thought about things like that ever. Like, I, Dude, that's why I always wanted us to do like, um uh either ziggy stardust or like a david bowie album because that's honestly who got me thinking about that was there was there was this david bowie and then when he would do an album he would become a character for that album or like even tyler the creator does it the weekend actually does it too like Mm, for the after hours it was all that red suit and now after hours is done and there's no more red suit i think kendrick did it too with damn there was like a, a aesthetic and then once it ends it's something else. So Tyler did it with Igor. There was the dress. He did it with Cherry Bomb. There was um, the green hat and the and it's cool. Like wow. I like that. There's like a character. Like I, I I've always thought that's pretty interesting because it kind of kind of blends two things that I really like: music and I feel like it's something that I can never do. I don't think I could ever be a legit actor, but I like the idea of of going out there and playing a part because essentially like when you're going like what father john missy says when when you're going out there essentially you are playing a role for the people you know when you're doing anything publicly even if it is for yourself if you're going out there and putting it on a platform it is a little bit for the people too so it's kind of cool to i don't know i i think it's also kind of cool to i guess separate it just because like there are parts about me that i feel like universe would be like you a little bitch (laughs) and there are parts about 
universe that I'm like, oh, bro, that's really irresponsible. Don't do that. <laughs> I feel you. you. know, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. Because we all I, have I this conversation, this dialogue back and forth in our minds, right? The good and the bad. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Maybe we should do that. Is it worth it? Is it risk? Is it worth, worth the risk? We have these this like, back and forth. And, and yeah. I think that that's the yin yang you know that's the uh, that's the polar that's why you know, that's what it is that's just life and it's like maybe that has to do with why i get so confused about creation or why i've been so confused because i've never even had that idea occur to me about this separation between myself and the what i create ever 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 I've always been so think, straightforward and honest about who I am that I don't know. Which, which I, th which I think is cool too, in its own right. And but and then it makes you think of, it makes me think of like, that's cool in its own right because it's like it's like an auth authenticity thing. Like this is who I am all the time, which is also really cool. Which is what you see a lot now with, with with artists today, like with like Lil Peep and stuff. It's like this is what Bob I am. Bob Dylan, I mean, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I guess. I guess yeah, so. yeah, and this is this is what it is all the time, which is really cool in itself too. Well, even like, Eminem, I think, I Eminem think, had three different names. You know, I don't know. I'm talking about Eminem. But. Yeah. So yeah, like, uh, but so like there hmm. is that though. You know, there's this. I'm unapologetically this all the time, which I think is really cool. But I also think, I guess maybe, I've never thought about being that way because I think for me, that would be a hard thing because. I'm so back and forth with myself. Yes, it is hard to be exactly. unapologetically anything all the time. Because you don't know who you are. I may be, yeah, because I may be this today, but tomorrow I may not be, you know? That's my life, so. bro. That, that's my life. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. literally dealing with is just trying to figure out, like, because I have always been, un, like you said, unapo unapologetically me for the most part. But I've, I've seen it get me into trouble, and I've, I'm trying to, you know, be the person that I want to be. You know, and, and, uh, but I don't know. I've I've grown up and I've had so many different names: Mikey, Miguel, you know, Audible, whatever the fuck. I've always had these different personas, and I never really felt like either of them were truly me, except for Audible Forty Four. Like that just always felt like who I who I am. So it's like you are Audible, I'm not, bro. but it's like I'm not Mikey. I don't feel like Mikey or Miguel. That yeah. doesn't feel like the true me, kind of, which is weird. But I don't know. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Does that make sense? I don't no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you, bro. We're definitely we're just we're just talking. You know? uh, but yeah, no. Uh, it's definitely something interesting. You should definitely think about it if you never yeah. have. I'm surprised you haven't. But, I haven't. Uh, I've really. Yeah. I mean, I've had so many different names that I never really asked myself like who the true one was. I guess. I guess I always try to come up with different names. You know, Shaman, Jimmy Smith. You know, all these different personas. I did try to persona, I guess, with Jimmy Smith, and it just didn't feel right. But I made some good music. That Jimmy Smith in the uh, Jimmy Smith of the I Don't Want to Be Famous Volume One shit. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that shit is dope. Dude, uh, the, the, some of those songs are super funny. And, and what's what's weird is that I made that album or that EP or whatever, uh, and and I and I remember making songs that were not anything like I'd ever made. I made songs with lyrics that had nothing to do with me talking about strip clubs and all this other shit. Like, yeah, I, it's shit I'd never done, but it was like, it was fun to do and, and play around with. So yeah, it was, it's interesting. It's interesting. I'll definitely think about that shit more. Yeah, man. Um, so the tribe, the tribe was, was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, this, this <laughs> was a good movie. <laughs> nah, but, uh, I mean, honestly, bro, like, uh, I'm down to wrap it up if you are. Fuck it. Um, I oh, oh, I just want to first give a shout out to all my deaf people there. Yeah, or straight up, straight up. A, a sign out, a yeah. handout, and maybe not a, a shout out. I don't know how. An eye, a wink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Uh, the movie's definitely interesting. The Tribe 2014. Go check it out. It's definitely worth a watch. Um, yeah. Realize, though, it's it's pretty silent. And uh, if you're scared of deaf people. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of <laughs> loud. You didn't notice that? Like, a lot of the background noise is kind of loud. Like, there's yeah. a lot of background. Monica was like, there's a lot of noise. It's pretty noisy for, you know, a deaf movie or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty noisy for a deaf movie. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, you're right. It is loud. Like yeah. the the background and scenery are, Which is are good. loud. Um, it's it's yeah, it's All a good right. movie. Good movie. I definitely recommend cool. it. You guys should check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. Has uh, if you guys don't uh, enjoy watching fucking fifty percent advertisements in a movie, maybe try to find it somewhere else. Or where'd you rent it from? Amazon. I rented on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. It was only three ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, that's how they get uh, you, bro. Motherfuckers. 
It's weird they never fucking used to do that though. It no. used to they it, yeah, cuz I thought that was the whole point of paying for Prime is yeah. the movies you get on Prime didn't have ads, Dude, you know what I mean? Everything's going to start getting more expensive. Netflix is going to be $50 eventually. Like it's going to be wild watch. I know it's going to be more expensive than cable when you have to pay for every fucking different streaming service. Yep. Exactly. Oh, Good thing you got oh, oh, Torrents, Pirate Bay, Holla. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, everybody go uh Go uh, subscribe uh, or yep. subscribe. To the, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, do all that. Like it. Go follow us on Instagram so, at Mind Control Podcast. I'm going to get on that. I've been lagging on the podcast, uh, Instagram. Same. We've been lagging on the episodes, too, but we're going to get back on it. Absolutely. I feel I feel good. I, I, I do I do want to say, if you guys uh, are listening or watching or whatever, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are 40 away from 100. Once we get to 100, oh. I'm able to make a uh, custom URL. So I can do it'll just be youtube.com slash mind control podcast. It'll be a lot easier to promote. So I really need you guys to do that for us. Uh yeah. Yeah, subscribe. GG's.